Around 4.6 billion years ago, a few clouds of cosmic dust drifted in just the right way and out of nothing but a sea of loose hydrogen, a star was born. Our star, the Sun. The Sun is at the center of our solar system. Like other stars, it is a massive hydrogen fusion generator, capable of producing an enormous amount of energy by cramming hydrogen atoms together to create helium. Just one second of the Sun's energy output would generate enough power to keep the United States running for the next 9 million years. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. Named for the Roman god of trade, Mercury is a rocky, barren world. Temperatures fluctuate dangerously. At night, they can be as low as negative 173 degrees Celsius, and during the day can be up to a scorching 427 degrees Celsius. A year on Mercury is only 88 Earth days, and it only experiences one and a half days during that time. Venus is the second planet from the Sun, and is closest to Earth. A runaway greenhouse effect has caused the surface of Venus to bake under the heat. The surface alone is hot enough to melt lead. The dense clouds seen on Venus were originally believed to be composed of water, much like the clouds of Earth. But upon further inspection and long-range scans, it was discovered that the clouds of Venus were actually composed of sulfuric acid. Earth, the only planet in the solar system that is known to have life. Earth is in the Goldilocks zone of the sun. Not too hot, not too cold, the perfect temperature for cellular life to exist. The surface conditions are just the right temperature that liquid water can exist on the planet's surface, just enough that carbon-based organic molecules can come into existence. The perfect place for life. Earth's moon is a satellite of the Earth, the closest celestial body. It causes tides due to its gravity pulling on the water of the Earth. The moon orbits the Earth at the same rate at which it rotates along its axis, causing a dark side that we never see from the Earth's surface. There is no dark side on the moon, really. Matter of fact, it's all dark. The only thing that makes it look light is the sun. Mars is the last of the rocky terrestrial planets in our solar system. It has a distinct red-orange color, the direct effect of iron in the sand of Mars rusting. Mars was recently visited by NASA's Curiosity rover, which discovered liquid water flowing on the planet's surface. Mars has other water as well, stored in large frozen ice caps at the planet's poles. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It is the first of the gas giant planets, composed of a gas that gets denser and denser the closer it gets to the core. One of the defining marks of Jupiter is its red spot, a massive storm on the planet's surface that has been raging for millennia. Jupiter is unique due to its size and number of moons, having over 67 known moons in orbit. The largest of these, Io, Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto, were first discovered in 1610 by the Renaissance astronomer Galileo Galilei. Saturn is the second of the gas giant planets, most easily identified by its large rings. The cloud of particles that make up Saturn's rings are anywhere from a few millimeters to several meters wide in size, and are in constant orbit of the planet. They are mostly made up of chunks of ice and some trace rocky material. Uranus... <laughs> Uranus is the seventh planet from the Sun. It has been tipped over on its side at an angle of 98 degrees, causing it to have vertical rings that run around the planet. Uranus became the first planet to be discovered by telescope, as it is not visible to the naked eye. It has 27 known moons, which is odd for its size. Neptune is a stark, barren planet. Covered in sheets of ice and glaciers, Neptune has great geysers of liquid nitrogen that spew up from under the planet's surface. 
However, Neptune's surface layer is solid enough to stand on, and the gravity is a mere 1.125 times greater than the Earth's. Pluto is at the far edge of our solar system. It is the furthest planet from the Sun. However, every 286 years, it crosses the path of Neptune's orbit and becomes the eighth closest to the Sun for a brief 20-year period. Pluto was demoted to a dwarf planet in August of 2006, but then in 2014, astronomers found enough evidence to reinstate it as a planet.